Today, I would like to teach you how to find the domain of the following rational function of f of x is equal to x minus 1 divided by x plus 2. So the idea with domain is basically what you want to ask yourself. You want to ask yourself a question. What's the meaning of life? No, I'm kidding. Not that question. The question that you want to ask yourself is, are there any values of x that I cannot plug in to this function? Or in other words, are there any values of x that are going to give an overall wacky answer to this function. So when I look at this x, I'm like, uh, no, I can kind of plug anything in for this x, right? And uh, any number here that I plug in minus 1, I can do that math. That's not a problem. Okay, so it sounds to me like all real numbers so far. Then I look at this x, and I'm like, well, this x is being added to 2. I can really add, you know, any uh, number to 2. So there's really no restrictions. Then what you want to do is you want to think about the function as a whole piece, all right? And is there any restrictions about numbers that can go in the numerator? Well, no, right? You can plug in any number you want in the numerator, all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. How about, though, the denominator? Well, it turns out there's one special number you cannot have in a denominator. What is it? It's big ol' zero, right? Big ol' zero. So whenever you have a fractional function here, you can just basically take the denominator and set it equal to 0. Now when you do that, what you're doing is you're saying x plus 2 has to equal 0. I'm trying to figure out what x is that will make this thing become 0. And obviously this is pretty simple, right? x is going to be equal to negative 2. So if you plug in a negative 2 value here for x, the denominator becomes 0. That's a problem because you cannot divide by 0. You can't do it, all right? So this is what I call a domain restriction. And that's really the only restriction. Now, if you had stuff like a square root under here, there would be you know, additional restrictions, right? You can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay, so on and so forth. But for this problem, there's only one restriction here. It's going to be negative 2. So you can say something like all reals, all real numbers, you know, except for uh, negative 2. Now, and you can write x equals negative 2. That's fine. Um, you know, if you had to write that in interval notation or who, you know, whatever notation you need, that's kind of besides the point. But that's the domain, all real numbers except for uh, negative 2. And if you were to go and use your calculator, you can graph this thing. Watch, do open parentheses, uh, x minus 1, all right, close them, then divided by, open those parentheses, going to be x plus 2, close the parentheses. You can hit graph now if you want. All right, let me zoom, let me zoom standard this. So it looks like a crazy function. And when you look at the graph, there's like, oh, it doesn't, I don't see any holes in it or anything. Well, if you go to your table, you'll see it. So when you go to your table, you see how when x is negative 2, there's an error. Er, can't do it. Can't do it because when you plug in negative 2 here into your function, you get an undefined result. All right. So x cannot be negative 2. Um, and also from the graph, if you notice... Uh, why did I hit second? If you notice from the graph, you see at negative 2, when x is negative 2, you start to see this thing hitting a ooh, vertical asymptote, maybe? Whoop! Right? That's for another video. All right, guys. Thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And if it did, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. We've got thousands of videos out there. Check out our channel. Physics, mathematics, chemistry. We've got a whole lot of other stuff coming. We solve specific problems because that's what you're going to see on your tests. Take a look at our channel. Take care.